My name is Christian Puckett. This is Peacekeeper. Good morning, everyone. I think this is the 10th episode. Um, So it's a bit of a stressful time, just in all honesty. Uh, Things are in motion. Things are up in the air. Uh, Things are in a transitional phase. And I'm I'm actually recording this episode uh, today. Let's see. Today's, yeah, today's Wednesday, January 18th. Um, so yeah, no baby yet. And we're pretty, we're, I don't even, I don't think Emily's going to listen to this. <laughs> I don't think Emily's going to listen to this. I think she's got other stuff on her mind. So I'm probably free to talk on it. Uh, but yeah, no baby yet. And it's fine, right? I mean, no rush, but also <laughs> it's like kind of, I don't know. So uh, according to uh, the people that do the ultrasound, uh, our due date was January 8th. But according to Dar Luz, our due date is January 14th. Regardless, we're just talking a handful of days here. Uh, we're, we're in the 40th week, and so we're still just kind of wait, waiting patiently. Um, we thought it was going to happen. We thought it was going to happen on Saturday. Uh, and then we thought it was going to happen on Sunday. And then <laughs> um, Emily's sister flew into town. <laughs> Just like, oh, yeah, I'm sure it'll happen because she wanted to be here uh, when the baby came. And today, yeah, today's today's Wednesday and still no baby. We had an appointment yesterday. Um, I probably won't go into too much detail about all this stuff, but they tried a few things to get things going, kick things into gear. A few like interventions and stuff. Nothing like serious, of course, because we're still... We're still fine, right? Uh, they're not going to start worrying until we hit 42 weeks. And we're still in the 40th week. So we're, we're good. I think we're both just like, ah, like we're so ready to go. And these things, you know, babies will come when they're ready to come. We actually were kind of asking the question, like we wonder, is it the baby that, <laughs> this is like a this is a question that a five year old would ask, or this is a question that Aesop would ask if he could. But it's like <laughs> Does the baby come when the baby's ready, or does the baby come when the mother's body is like, okay, I'm ready. Like this thing is fully ready to go. Like who makes that decision? Is it the baby or the or the body that it's being created in? Anyway, that's a side note. Um, yeah, we're both just ready. Um, and there's not much we can do about it. So we're just, we're not in a rush. We're not going to force things. Um, not, I mean, we can't force things even though, though we want to. Um, and then let's see here. Okay, so so for people watching... I am in a new location. <laughs> I, yeah, so Hudson, my brother-in-law, Emily's younger brother, has been living with us for maybe the past six to 12 months. I don't really remember, but he's been living with us. Uh, we Yeah, we've been renting out our third bedroom to him. And... Just over the course of the last few weeks, we've been like, oh no, this baby. <laughs> like, we live in a pretty small house already. Um, and it's about to get a whole lot smaller with a second baby. And he's got a spot lined up in April, but we were just like, dude, it's going to be raw. It's going to be 
TMI. It's going to be too much to see. It's going to be gritty. During the first few months of bringing home a newborn, there's like, oh my goodness, diapers and nipples and milk and throw up and spit up and crying. And on top of all that, we're going to have to, I mean, Aesop has just been, he's been leveling up his, his preferences, his attitude, his voice and man, it's just going to be, it's going to be challenging. Uh, so we're just like, dude, all love, but (laughs) so he's actually going to be staying, um, at one of my parents' properties with, uh, the old sibling L and that's going to be good. So we, so, okay. So all that to say, we are sort of in transition mode as far as this third bedroom. So he's in the process of moving all of his stuff out. And this is going to (laughs) be, it's going to be a multi-use room, but I'm going to be using it to do my podcasts. So this is going to be the new studio uh, with maybe a, <laughs> a spare bedroom and, uh, or, uh, I don't know. It's going to be storage. It's going to be a spare bedroom. It's going to be an office. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a sewing room. It's going to be a podcast room. So it's a, it's a very multi-purpose, multi-use room going forward until one of the kids takes it over and then I get kicked out and I don't know. But for the next at least six months, this is going to be the podcast room. So this is as ugly and empty and barren as it's ever going to be. And hopefully I can make it look whatever, look look a certain way, look aesthetically pleasing. Luckily, I got this sweet window right in front of me for excellent lighting. No more need for that flimsy little LED ring. Uh, and it's super overcast right now. So great lighting. Um, sometimes I'm guessing the, well, yeah. Okay. So this is a South facing room. So we're in peak winter too. So the sun is probably going to be blasting, uh, when it's not overcast, but it's all right. Um, I'm, I'm thankful for a good window. Okay. So yes, Hudson's moving out. I'm moving in baby is imminent any second now any hour now um emily and maddie are taking a quick trip to savers right now and i'm just like okay i don't i i can't even predict when i'm going to be able to record going forward so i'm just having to take any opportunity i can so i probably have whatever i'm probably just going to go until i see the car roll up which could be in 30 minutes or whatever who knows uh i got i got a text from a few of my friends yesterday and they were just like hey we should hang out it's been it's been a while since we all hung out um you know i miss you guys whatever and it really kind of just reminded me how deep into parenting mode i am I think I've become numb to a lot of what parenting entails and the amount of work and sacrifice that goes into parenting. I've just been in it, right, for the last two years. Um, But sometimes I just forget what it's like to not have kids, right? I mean, I, I, so I'm at the point now where I could not imagine my life without my kid, uh, without Aesop. It's, I mean, man, what a completely, it's hard because it's, it's, it's literally the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. It's the most like gratifying and satisfying and fulfilling and meaningful thing I've ever done in my life. And it's just this weird contrast of this is so freaking hard. And 
I'm just like stretched so thin and Emily and I is, I mean, especially Emily right now, she's, she's got a short fuse, <laughs> uh, but our fuses are so short and all of that, like it's so stressful, but all at the same time, it's just so rewarding having Aesop around and having him in our lives and he's such a gift and he gives us a whole new perspective on on life and he's just so sweet and difficult <laughs> so man it's just so challenging and then the amount of work that has gone in just two years of work that has gone into Aesop and then throwing a newborn into that mix and then having to do that all over again on top of dealing with Aesop is just, yeah, I probably sound like a broken record at times, um, but it's, it's hard. And I'm, and we're both just realizing um, what our lives are going to look like going forward, going forward for the next 18 years, 20 years, I mean, and for the rest of our lives. And man, kids are such a sacrifice. You really give up and give so much life and you pour your life into theirs and it I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if it comes at a cost to your own life or if it really just builds you and strengthens you into become like into becoming something greater than you were before you had kids. Yeah, kids. Um love them. They're hard. Um they're especially I don't, I don't know if it's harder these days or not. Um, who knows? So I've been reading this book called Essentialism. Uh, my sister Shilling gave it to me for Christmas. And I think, I mean, I think I already talked about it on a previous podcast. Uh, but there's just a couple key points that I was reading this last week. And I'm almost finished with it. Um, but just a few, uh, kind of big ideas and big topics that I wanted to briefly talk on. Um, I feel like I want to do a book report, um, just cause this, <laughs> this book is, it's so good and it's so valuable and it's definitely speaking to me right now. But one of the big ideas that he talks about is the idea of saying no, um, I am a person that does not like to say no to people. Um, I don't like conflict and saying no to somebody and like rejecting them. Like I feel like I'm rejecting them whenever I say no to an offer or to a, you know, a request to hang out or something like that. Not that it happens <laughs> it's, it's happening less and less as I get older. But yeah, there's there is there's value in deciding for yourself which activities you want to deliberately participate in and offers are going to come and opportunities are going to come and events are going to come and before you know it, they're going to take up all your time and you're going to want, you're going to get to this point of being like, how did I even get here? I've been saying no to a lot of friend hangouts for the past, I would say five years. Um, and I've kind of felt bad about that a little bit because kind of another short, uh, metaphor that he talks about in this book is imagining your life as a four burner stove. So the first burner is your family. The second burner is your work. 
The third burner is your friends. And then the fourth burner is your health. And so he says, if you want to be successful, you have to shut off one of these burners. If you want to be really successful, you have to shut off two. And that was a really interesting little metaphor for me because it's like, okay, there's four kind of main main aspects of life. Uh, there's work, there's family, there's friends slash like free time, I guess, like friends and play. And then the last one is your health. And obviously there's much more to life than these four things. But for the sake of the metaphor, uh, okay, so if you want to be successful in three areas, you have to shut off one of the burners. So which burner are you going to shut off? Well, I feel like I've, for the at least for the last like three to five years, I've, I'll just be honest, I've shut off the friends burner. And that's a tough burner to shut off. Um, but I feel like my life circumstances have kind of forced that decision, at least for this time, right? So I've got my family burner on, I've got my work burner on, and I've got my health burner on. Three burners. Okay, so if I want to be really successful in two areas, I have to shut off another burner. And I, Okay, so again, I want to reiterate, this is just like a flimsy little metaphor. It's not accurate to how life actually goes. But in theory, if I wanted to be successful, <laughs> I want to be successful in all those areas, right? I want to have a healthy, functioning family. I want to be in uh, work that fulfills me and makes me lots of money. And I want my health, I mean, to be tip top shape. So, <laughs> so it's like, damn, I don't want to choose between those three, like three things. Um, I don't want to pick two of those. I literally just got a text from my friends saying that they want to hang out. <laughs> and I'm just like, I can't too much going on. Um, Okay, so the friends slash fun burner has been shut off. Maybe not the fun. I still have fun. I have fun. Um, the friends burner. And to all my friends out there listening, they've been shut off to everybody but you, I promise. Joke. Um, okay, where was I? Um, all right. So I'm kind of... If I were to take that metaphor seriously... I can't neglect my health. Um, I have learned over the last five years that that has to be my top priority. Um, that has to come first. I have to work on myself first in order to be able to love and to care and to provide for those around me. Um, if I If I shut off my health burner, I can't I can't perform in any other area of my life. So that one has to be at the forefront. Like my health, my physical health and my my mental well-being, that has to be I have to be selfish and that has to be my first priority. Okay, so there's my health burner. My second burner. Okay. Well, if I'm only allowed to choose two, I can't choose between work and family. Um, okay, well, I'm in a position where I'm raising a family. I'm also in charge of providing financial support of being the person that brings in finances, brings in money, and that that is providing for my family. And so I, I'm trying to like couple those two together where working is for my family. I'm reminded of Breaking Bad when Heisenberg <laughs> is like, everything I do, I do for my family. And he just like totally goes off the fucking deep end. And <laughs> I'm not comparing myself to Walter White. I'm the, I'm the very PG version of the rated R Walter White. 
Um, okay, so yes, I I sort of like I have okay, I have to focus on work, right? I have to get creative. I mean, I have luckily, oh my god, luckily I've got my stable day job of I guess yeah of working six to two whole foods whatever uh, <laughs> uh okay but then if i want to be successful i've got to shut off every other burner <laughs> okay yeah so okay this is me yelling into a microphone with a camera pointed into my into my face um nobody i don't expect anybody to care about my situation <laughs> to be invested into my my stressors my anxieties uh but this is me just whatever i'm trying to build a youtube channel i'm trying to build a podcast um so okay so another uh kind of big big idea from the book is setting goals and setting realistic goals. And I know to people like me trying to explain a book I read to people on a podcast is just like, it probably sounds like the most stereotypical idealistic, you know, ideas of just like learn how to say no and set goals for yourself and learn how to edit your life and plan. But whatever, read the book and, <laughs> or don't read the book. Um, Anyway, so setting realistic and specific goals that aren't like super lofty and aren't super like, you know, okay, so I was thinking about what kind of like mission statement or what kind of goal do I want to have for this podcast? Um, is it, okay, okay, so if I just have the goal of, okay, I want to build a successful podcast, there's no like criteria for what that means um, because that that goal post will never end right that that target will never end um, so it's like realizing and um, accepting where you're at currently and then projecting into the future of okay what is what is a theoretical realistic goal that I am capable of achieving and aim for that. Don't get too grandiose or ambitious. Not that ambition is a bad thing, but let's be realistic here. So I have a goal right now that I'm still I'm still formulating, but I'm just gonna start I'm I'm gonna start putting the goal out there and I think it's a, I think it's achievable. I think it's attainable. So I'm 27 years old right now. By the time I'm 30, I would like to be making more money from doing this podcast and YouTube videos. More money from these two things than the money I make from Whole Foods. I think I can do that. I've got two, roughly two and a half years to make a successful podcast and I'm narrowing the definition of what successful means to me. So it's not like, Oh, how many subscribers am I aiming for? Or, uh, you know, how many views do I want to get? It's, I would, I would like to get to a point by the time I'm 30 years old, I'm making as much money or more from this podcast and YouTube than I make from Whole Foods. And that is my goal. Maybe I'll tweak it a little bit as, you know, I kind of course correct and move forward. But from where I'm at right now, I think I can make it happen. Okay, next subject. So last week, my camera died halfway through. Okay, it didn't actually die. So I 
was recording my episode last week and then about three fourths the way through my camera stopped recording, which was rather unfortunate. Um, I, I truly and genuinely don't think anybody cares, but I can't have that happening. Right. Um, so the, the one, I think I said something about this last week, but there's a few kind of smaller frustrations with, with this camera. Uh, one is that the camera doesn't freaking flip out. So I I can't swivel the screen. Okay, sorry, I meant to say the screen. The screen does not swivel out so we're, like I could see it pointing at me. It only faces the opposite direction. So uh, my other camera, I'm able to flip the screen completely uh, 180 degrees so that I can see it while being in front of the camera. Uh, this one, it swivels like a little bit down and up, but I have no way of knowing if it stops recording because even the light, like the blinking record light is on the back of the camera. So I could just be talking into, like, I could just be talking to a camera and thinking it's recording and I find out that it was just like dead or something. So I don't know why it stopped recording last week. Frankly, it doesn't matter, but so uh, this week I went to Walmart and got myself a little bathroom mirror, and so I have the mirror sitting in my windowsill right now. I can see myself, and it's great because I now I know if my camera decides to just randomly stop recording or if the battery dies or if the SD card fills up or whatever. There's a number of things that could make a camera stop recording. Um, for people that are just listening, that doesn't matter, right? Because, of course, the audio is all there. But uh, that was just another little tweak I've made this week. Uh, like I said last week, this is a work in progress. Every every episode, I aim to get a little bit better, a little bit more refined, streamline the process a little bit more. And I actually... Okay, so I've I'm on episode 10. I freaking called it, right? I mean, I didn't, like, I just, I went back this week and listened to my first episode or I watched it on YouTube and I'm stoked because it sucks, <laughs> right? It looks terrible. <laughs> I don't know. The editing is clunky and whatever. Um, but I just feel like I can actually see my progression, right? From episode one to two to three, four, five, whatever. It's, I'm on episode 10. I've got a nice intro. I'm really learning the importance of thumbnails and titles on YouTube. I can already see my my YouTube charts slowly but surely raising up a little bit. Um, I have this mountain in front of me uh, in regards to YouTube in order to get monetized. Uh, so these days, in order to be monetized... On YouTube, so in order to put ads on your videos, you have to have 1,000 followers and you have to have either 4,000 hours of watch time within the last year or 10 million short, like shorts, YouTube shorts views within the last 90 days. So the bar is very high at the moment in order to put ads on your videos. It used to, back in the day, you could just throw them on, right? And essentially, you just apply for it, and they're like, sure, whatever. Uh, they would give it out to anybody. But now, just the sheer amount of content that is being uploaded to YouTube every minute, every hour, I guess they kind of have to set a certain criteria for who gets to put ads on their videos, who gets to make money through AdSense. And so the 1,000 subscribers, I'm not worried about that. I've got just under 1,000. Uh, I've got like 900-something. Uh, that's that's easy, right? I could figure out how to get 50 more subscribers. But the mountain in front of me is figuring out how to get 4,000 hours of watch time. And so what watch time is on YouTube is... Um, let's say you post a, 
let's say you post a 10 minute video and six people watch it all the way through. So that's 60 minutes. That's one hour of watch time. Uh, if you post a one hour video and one person watches it all the way through, that's one hour. Obvious. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, but that is, <laughs> those are under very ideal circumstances. In reality, uh, the average view duration and attention rate per videos is, I guess it's different for everybody, right? But it's typically, most people will watch a few minutes of, of your videos, right? And then they'll click off into something else. They'll get distracted. They'll watch the next suggested video. So it's actually really, really difficult to get a person to watch your videos all the way through. Um, I think a very, very small percentage of people, act, like 10% or less, actually watch videos all the way through. Uh, for me, maybe that's pulling the curtain behind my analytics too much, but <laughs> um, I don't care, whatever. Uh, so realistically... Um, per, uh, I'll just like go off like a, a podcast, like an average podcast I post, I'll probably get, um, around like five hours of watch time. Um, because a lot of people, I mean, right now I don't have a big following at the moment. I'm still just trying to like build. I'm in the, I'm laying the groundwork. I'm laying the foundation. Um, but I mean, 50 views on a video on an hour long podcast does not equate to 50 hours of watch time. It's, it's much less than that. Uh, and that's something that YouTube, uh, th that's something I'm trying to focus on and that YouTube cares a lot about when it comes to recommending your videos and the algorithm is if they see that you have a high click through rate if you have really high retention, if you have a lot of watch time, then they're more likely to suggest your videos. If they see that you, they're click that that viewers are clicking on a video, watching ten seconds, and then clicking off, uh, sure that technically counts as a view, but views are not as important as watch time. Watch time is a that, that's the main metric. Um. That's what YouTube cares about the most is watch time on their platform, right? Okay, so anyway, um, to be monetized, I have to have 4,000 hours of watch time. I'm also posting those shorts, but there's no way in hell I'm gonna be, ma I'm I'm gonna be raking in 10 million views on my shorts <laughs> within a three month period. That's just not gonna happen anytime soon. Maybe in the future it'll happen, but right now that's not, I'm not the right channel for that, right? Uh, I'm still going to post them. Um, I've been posting videos every single day, shorts included, uh, for the, since the start of the new year. Okay, so 4,000 hours of watch time is more realistic for me to achieve in a one-year period. So right now, I'm like, I have around like 100, 150 hours since I've started this podcast of active watch time. So anyway, what I, I was saying earlier is that that's slowly starting to eke up a little bit. Um, I think uh, as far as like the three C's of YouTube and for those that don't know what the three C's of YouTube are, it's content, consistency, and collaboration. So you have to start off with quality content. If you don't have the content, if nobody cares about what you're making, then you're in the wrong game, right? I mean, the content comes first. You have to have captivating and interesting content. Maybe that could be a C. It's a captivating content. It's the CC of the Cs. <laughs> uh, you have to have captivating and engaging and interesting content first. So that should be your first priority. That's what I'm trying to focus on, right? Uh, the second C is consistency. So YouTube really cares about consistency. Um, if you focus on good content, at least in the beginning phases, right? Um, you could probably reach a certain point where you don't have to be as consistent. 
But when you're building and when you're new and when you're starting off like I am, I could spend two weeks working on one video and post it and then fall off and then not post another video for another three weeks and then post, like, you know, get really motivated and post one, two, three videos in one day and then wait a whole, and so that's, that's not appealing. Um, that's not predictable. And, uh, in order to gain a, an audience, uh, you have to be predictable. You have to, people have to know when and where your content is going to be hitting their phones, hitting their, their computers. So you have to be consistent. So that's why I'm really trying to stick with posting every single Thursday. Um, again, I, will I be perfect? No, I probably won't, but I'm going to aim. I'm going to try as to, you know, to the best of my ability to post once a week on Thursdays at a minimum. Um, I've been really consistent with posting other stuff on top of that uh, on a daily basis, right? So I've been focusing on making shorts. I've been making clips. Um, those are those are extra, right? Those are not 100% necessary, but um, I'm trying to add fuel to the f- YouTube fire, right? And uh, it's, you know, I'm getting more views and watch time from it. So it, it's working slowly, but surely. And then the last C is collaboration. So I can already tell of the 10 episodes I've posted, the two episodes where I had Emily and then my dad on have done the best, right? Uh, collaboration, you like getting two individuals, audiences, is much more beneficial than just my <laughs> my audience alone, right? My quote unquote audience. Um, you have to put yourself in other people's circles. You have to engage with different people, and then they will tell their circles and their audiences, "Hey, go check out this video that I was on." Like they're gonna promote it, and then you're gonna get a whole new batch a whole new set of eyes and then maybe a fraction of them a small fraction will click with your content and then they'll stick around and then you'll have a few more followers so doing that so all that those three c's times time right so my goal is to by the time i'm 30 be making as much money from this podcast and youtube as i make from whole foods Doing all of that, so those three C's, if I focus on content, consistency, and collaboration for two and a half years straight, it's not a sure thing, but those are, you know, those are good odds. I would say that could be in my favor as long as I can execute well. Um, Obviously, if I didn't have anything interesting to say or if I had like terrible editing skills, that might not work, but I, I think I can do it. I think... Um, I think as I grow and as I learn more and as I bring in, uh, more interesting guests, I think, I think that's doable. I think I can, I think I can do this. I think I can. Yeah. So the YouTube algorithm, that's a, it's a tough snake to catch. I'm going to catch it though. I promise. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's about all I wanted to talk about today. Um, I'm, I'm really grateful to have been able to get this podcast in. Um, like I've reiterated, I don't know what these next few days are going to hold. So, uh, I'm going to post this one tomorrow and it'll probably be a earlier episode earlier in the day. Um, I typically record and then post later in the day on Thursdays, but I'll probably edit this one tonight and then be able to post it first thing in the morning. Okay, uh, thank you so much for, <laughs> so for the small fraction of people that actually stuck through the entire video, uh, it's probably 10% or less, uh, but if you're listening to this right now, I truly thank you um, for helping me build my watch time. <laughs>
No, I I do I do genuinely appreciate anybody that I mean there is essentially an unlimited amount of options uh to choose from out there these days as far as content and podcasts and videos and all that. So truly and genuinely thank you for for listening or for, thank you for watching. Uh if you are on YouTube you're probably already subscribed, right? <laughs> But if you're not, uh, if you could subscribe, that would be very helpful is what I'm learning. <laughs> and then if you're on Spotify or Apple or any of the podcast apps, uh, if you could leave me a review, uh, that would be that would be very, very helpful. Thank you. And that's all I have for today. Episode 10 of the Peacekeeper podcast. Uh, I'm going to get my uh, sister Shaleen on next. Um, whether that's next week or whether that's in two weeks is yet to be seen. Uh, and hopefully next time this podcast posts, this room will be kind of cool, right? I want to try to make it look pretty, pretty cool in here. Okay. Yeah. Shit's happening. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm happy with this podcast. All right. Goodbye, everyone.